So just to redraw these curves again, there's the adsorption curve and here's the desorption curve. And there's our limit of 95% relative humidity. And these types of curves are called sorption isotherms. And they're called isotherms because they're run at a constant temperature. And the word isotherm means constant temperature. So if we did this experiment at a different temperature, we'd get a different set of data, different curves. And uh, it's important when we run the experiment that we run it at constant temperature and the temperature doesn't vary because if it does, it will invalidate the experiment. In the real life, wood is seldom in an equilibrium situation because the atmospheric humidity is going up and down constantly. When it's raining, as it is today, it will be up there. And most of the time, it's probably moving between sort of 30 and 60%. Depends where you are, what environment you're in, but it will be moving up and down, it's seldom stable. So these curves here that we've obtained with an experiment, these represent the kind of extreme situations and they're referred to as boundary curves. And when we've got this fluctuation, this constant change and the wood's not in an equilibrium situation, it will be showing equilibrium moisture contents, which vary as the relative humidity goes up and down. I can't draw them exactly because it depends on the history of the sample. Uh, those sorts of curves that sit inside there, they're called scanning curves. So that's more of a realistic situation for the wood. So it's not in an equilibrium situation. It hasn't reached an equilibrium moisture content. It's the sort of thing you'll only get in experiments, really.